Okay, guys, so today is Friday, February 22nd. Crap, it's actually it's actually Saturday the 22nd because it's 1.30 in the morning. But to me, it's still Friday. I just got back this morning from, uh, from L.A. It has been like a crazy, crazy whirlwind the past couple of days. Let me back up here a little bit. I want to take this opportunity to tell you guys all about my experience on Tosh.0. I cannot believe I am standing in front of a legitimate, fully functional Rax restaurant. Oh my god, it's just so unbelievable. Look at these trays. Holy crap. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm shaking, guys, because I'm so excited about Rax. We are totally going down into the solarium. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful, bountiful, delicious meal. Mm. Nothing like sunbathing in a solarium while you enjoy piping hot and microwaved roast beef. Let me just first start by saying thank you so much to everybody at the Tosh.0 show. Uh, you guys went above and beyond to make sure that this whole process was easy and that we had all of our needs met. Anything that could possibly need taken care of was taken care of. And, uh... You know, very smooth. Everybody was very professional. Everybody knew their jobs and they did them so well. It was it was an amazing experience. Okay, so about three weeks ago, I got a message, a comment on one of my videos on YouTube, and they said, uh, hey, my name's Eric. I'm from a TV show. I wondered if you have a minute to talk. And I just kind of blew it off. I thought, whatever, you're from a TV show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then about a week later or so, um, I got a message through eBay. And it was this same person. They said, hey, my name's Eric. I'm from the Tosh.0 show. I'm a producer. And uh, we saw some of your stuff on YouTube. We like your your personality or something like that. You know, something to that effect. And they said, I wonder if you had a minute to give me a call. And so I was able to see, like, what his name was. I did a little bit of research on him. And then I said, uh, yeah, I would be interested in that. Um, can you prove to me who you are before we actually get on the phone? So he uh, sent me a business card, I think it was, and I looked him up a little bit more, did some research on the phone numbers, and I found it to be legit. So I went ahead and gave him a call, and we discussed the whole thing. He basically just said that, yeah, somebody brought one of my videos to his attention, and uh, and they were watching them, and they liked them, thought I was funny, how it was funny, how I was excited about everything, and always happy, and blah, blah, blah. Um, they mentioned the rainforest car wash, so I thought this was all going to revolve around that because of how <laughs> how excited I was when I looked at the one rainforest car wash and I saw the uh, the live bird in there and everything. Because that's a pretty funny video, you got to admit, I like that one. But that was the uh, that was like the initial conversation between me and this producer. So basically that conversation ends with him saying, okay, I'm the only one in the office here. Everybody else is off for like another week. And uh, when they come back next Monday, I'll give you a call and we'll let you know after we've had these meetings. And um, we'll let you know if we're going to go ahead and do something with you. And he said, basically, uh, there, there's a couple of different ways that it could go. One, we just kind of show your videos and talk about them. Another way is that we could do like a web chat over the internet on Skype or something. And then he said the third way is that we would actually fly you out here, put you up in a hotel, bring you to the studio, and then we uh, we do like an interview. You know, you get interviewed by, by Daniel Tosh himself, and then you do like a little skit with him. And uh, so he said, you know, we're not really sure what we do yet, but, um, you know, would you be interested in any or, you know, how, how, how interested would you be in each of those ideas? And I said, well, I'm, I'm totally down for whatever you guys want to do. So he said, okay, good. You know, we'll, we'll have our meeting and I will give you a call back about this same time next Monday. And so that was the end of that conversation. I didn't tell anybody. I kept it to myself. I told my sister because I wanted to make sure that she could actually get off of work to go with me because he did tell me that if we fly you down here, if you have somebody you want to travel with, you can bring somebody with you. And uh, my sister used to watch the show all the time. We used to talk about it because it's so funny. And so I immediately thought of her. And uh, like I said, you know, I let her know and I said, hey, you know, be prepared and see if you can get work off or whatever you need to do. Um, and you can go with me to this thing. So, so I think that was it. I mean, I may have said something to like maybe one other person about, hey, there's a possibility and this would be really cool. But I pretty much kept it to myself because honestly, at that point, there still was nothing that was completely solidifying it 
as being legit. You know, I mean, the person that I talked to on the phone, this Eric, he was very well spoken. He was completely professional in every way. He had every bit of information that you could imagine that you would need in this situation. But there was still that little part of me going, okay, this could be a prank. You know, I know people who would try to pull this prank on me. And uh, so, you know, I just kind of let it at that. Well, week went by, the next Monday came up, and sure enough, um, it was, I don't know, maybe two, three o'clock in the afternoon or something. And I was kind of in that, that spot where you're waiting for something, but you're not sure if it's going to happen. So you're kind of wasting your day just waiting. And I'm like, all right, I got to get on with my day here. I've got to forget about this. So I was just about to send him a, an email myself and uh, and just say, hey, you know, I, I got some things I need to do here. So just let me know if you guys decide to do this. And I was going to give myself that closure so I could walk away from that. And uh, pulled open my email and there was an email from him and it said, hey, it's a go. We're going to do it. Um, give me a call when you have a chance here. So I called him and that was that. He said, hey, OK, we're going to um, we're going to fly you down here. We're going to put you up in a hotel for the night. Uh, let me know, you know, this information so we can get the tickets and blah, blah, blah. And from there, it was totally set in motion. They sent me like a uh, potential flight itinerary. I had to look at it and say if that would work for me. It did work for me. And I said, let's do it. And they came back and they gave me links and all this good stuff. And I, I called the hotel and I made sure that that was legit. I got on a website for uh, Delta Airlines, checked that out, and everything was legit. And I'm like, wow, this is really going to happen here. So it was that quick from the moment that they decided to do it, it was you're flying out on Wednesday. And this was Monday. So I had Tuesday to get all my affairs in order to fly out on Wednesday uh, get there Wednesday night. I had connecting flights, so I had to leave at like 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Um, I think we flew into Atlanta, then we had a layover there for a couple hours. Then we flew from there, a five-hour flight, to uh, right out to L.A. There's a three-hour time difference. We got out there to L.A. about 7, 7.30. We met a girl named Elena, who was our driver. And she's actually a production assistant. Um, but she came out to pick us up. She took us over to the hotel, got us checked in. Um, the show gave us $100, like cash, you know, to pay for food or anything that we w would need. They gave me a swag bag, which had like some chocolate and some cookies and stuff like that in it. This Daniel Tosh DVD. Um, this awesome Tosh t-shirt, which I actually haven't opened yet, but it's just black with a square that says Tosh. And I believe there was a couple of other things in there. So basically, uh, we went downstairs after we got checked in. We had something to eat, came back upstairs, and we were wiped out. I mean, that it, w it was the whole day of flying and sitting around at the airports waiting and that. So we were wiped out. We went to bed at like 9.30, got up and met Elena downstairs at 6.15 in the morning. Uh, she had already checked us out. We took off. We went to the studio. And when we went into the studio, they took us into a little room called the Green Room. And that's where I started meeting everybody under the sun. <laughs> I mean, other producers, the PA, the makeup girl, um, you know, people who needed me to sign contracts and, and just all kinds of stuff. And the contract was like this thick. I mean, it was like lots of paperwork and stuff, you know, W-2s and blah, blah, blah. Not W-2s, but, you know, whatever the, the, fa the tax form is, 1099 or something. I don't know what it is. Forms you got to sign, you know, to get paid. So um, so I went over all that stuff, and they'd be double-checking that, and then I'm up in a chair over here getting makeup done, and they're like airbrushing me and all this stuff. And, I mean, there was, like, you know, a basket of snacks on the table and everything. You could have whatever you wanted, man. They took us out. They showed us the studio and a gigantic green screen there. I mean, I was just, like, in heaven looking at this stuff because I just I love filmmaking, and I love everything that comes with a studio. And like, uh, you know, the, the sound stage and everything. And, and then they took me over and they showed me what they were building. And it was <laughs> a replica of the White Castle. And I'm just like, holy crap, this is sweet. And I honestly wish that they had not shown me that yet. Because the skit later on that they were going to have me do was they wanted me to be so excited about everything that Daniel was showing me. What to them was not interesting at all. But to me, I was going to be blown away by it. And, uh, and that was my initial reaction there as I'm walking in and I'm seeing all this stuff that I love so much. 
and, and seeing it in reality. And I was just like, whoa, and it was awesome. But then by the time we got around to the skit, I had seen it. And even though it was still awesome, it was weird because I was trying to like fake it and stuff. We'll get to that. But back on track, they showed me the, the, uh, the set. They took us over to this table where they had like all kinds of foods. I mean, breakfast burritos and fruit and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of drinks and, you know, water and pop and coffee and just anything you could want. And, you know, I didn't want to drink anything because I didn't want to have to pee or so, I, you know, I, my sister grabbed some stuff. We went back in the green room and um, after a bit, I mean, it's probably about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Um, they they called in and they had Elena bring me onto the set. Um, they had already looked at what I was wearing, which was just the jeans and a black t-shirt. You know, I just, I just wore what I would wear in normal life to make my videos. You know, I wanted it to be me on there. I'm not trying to be some kind of a Hollywood star, not trying to get all sparkled up or anything, you know. So, uh, so they okay okayed what I was wearing. Um, Elena walks me out to the set. They had me sit down in the booth there, and uh, people are gathering around. I mean, they got the cameras going at every different angle. They got all kinds of monitors and lights and everything. It was totally sweet. And uh, then Daniel comes in. And <laughs> Daniel was so loud. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, he just, he projects his voice and he projects his presence on everybody there. How many locations of Skyline Chili in the state of Ohio? In such a good way. He was totally professional. Immediately, I could see why they have had this show on for 11 seasons and just renewed it for another four seasons because he is so good at what he does. And he had complete control of everybody in the room there. And again, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that um, the way he carried himself and the way he took care of everything, you know, everybody knew what moves and what he would say and do that they needed to react to. It was so smooth moving. It was like a well-oiled machine in there. It really, really was impressive. So Daniel comes over, he shakes my hand, says hi, and we talk for a second there. Um, but I mean, it was like chop, chop, chop. You know, they had an itinerary, they had a schedule, they had to keep with everything. Everything was scripted. Um, Daniel sits down and he real quick says to me, have I gone over any questions with you or anything? And I said, no, not really. And he said, okay, you know, we're just going to kind of riff on it for a little bit. And then we got, you know, questions here that we're going to look down at just, just kind of as a guide. And, uh, and then we just pretty much started in right from there. And I mean, he had me cracking up the whole time. It, it was kind of strange because I didn't know, you know, how much I should really be saying. It looks in these interviews like most of the time people just give very short answers. So I tried to stick with that. You know, it's his show. He's the focus of the show. Even though I was on there for this segment, it's still his show. It's still about Daniel Tosh. And uh, so, you know, I, I was trying not to steal the spotlight, if that's the way to put it. I, I'm not sure. You know, I was trying just not to say very much to make it seem like I was trying to take over or anything. Um, just let him maintain complete control and guide me through the process because he knew exactly where he wanted it to go. And, uh, and he did a very good job uh, controlling that. So we taped the whole interview. And, um, I mean, I think that took probably 45 minutes at least, if not an hour. And then we proceeded to do the rest of the stuff all out of order. Like the, uh, the intros, the outro, um, everything was like out of order. And then they edit all that together in the end. So the next thing that we filmed was him, the, the intro where he's sitting at the table and he calls to me from off stage, and I come walking in, like looking at and marveling at this white castle. And he's sitting there uh, talking about how he bought this place. And and I say, man, I I think I think my line was actually supposed to be, I love this place. It used to be a white castle, but it was difficult for me to get that out because that's not my natural talk. I mean, they tried to make it how it would be like something that I would say. But I, I asked, can I kind of ad lib this, you know, and say it the way that I would say it. So we did that probably a total of like six or seven times um, to get my movement right and the timing right and everything. And then I like I talked over one of his lines once and it's it kind of a difficult process. I said things different a couple of times, you know, oh, this is sweet, dude, this used to be a white castle and things like that. And 
I'm actually probably coming off more real on this video than I did on that set because there's just this this uh, presence there that that makes you feel real small almost. You know, it's kind of difficult. Um, it was fun though, nonetheless, and it was nothing about what anything what they were doing. They really made you feel comfortable. But we did that little bit there, and then we did the bit where. <laughs> <laughs> where the uh, the waiter brings over the food and sets it down in front of us. And man, they just had me busting up so hard over this thing. And we had to do several takes with that. I would mess up and then Daniel would mess up and we'd have to do it again. And, and the cups, um, there was a cup on each of the trays because the guy's carrying two trays. And the cups come falling over. First they had pop filled up to the top and we were afraid that it was going to fall over on us. So they emptied it all out. Then he had empty cups that wouldn't stand up. He'd take a step and they'd both fall down. And he had like real shaky hands anyways. And uh, finally they ended up putting like just enough liquid in the cups where they wouldn't go anywhere and it's not a threat of spilling. Um, brings them over, sets them down. We do our lines real quick. And uh, it was just hilarious. You know, I thought it was really cool that they added that in there where they let me say a prayer before we ate. And we never even actually ate. There are no white castles in that area, apparently. So I guess they bought frozen burgers, frozen white castle burgers, just from a store. And uh, and probably just had, like, I don't know if they have a printing department or whatever, prop department, but had them make up everything that had the white castle logo on there. Looked exactly like what you'd get at the restaurant, though. It was totally awesome. Now, maybe they ordered that stuff offline, eBay or something. I honestly don't know, but it was all props, um, except for the burgers. The burgers were real. You could eat them if you wanted to, but we didn't. That wasn't part of the skit. But yeah, I did think it was really cool that they uh, that they let me say the prayer before there. And even though it was part of the skit, that was very respectful of them for me because, I mean, of course, they saw me pray in my Rax video, and I think that's kind of what he was trying to duplicate right there. Um, but I just, I just thought that was really cool. You know, a lot of times his skits go awry. <laughs> and he never did that with me, you know. He didn't do anything that was inappropriate. And uh, it was just, it was, it was really good. You know, they were, they were very good with me the whole time. Um, the last thing that we did, we took a break for a little bit. And then the last thing that we did was the bit where we walk around... Uh, the office buildings and he is showing me around and the premise of it was that <laughs> he said something about you know you've you've made a living filming every hole in the area or something you know and now I'd like you to film my area and when he said that I didn't know if I was supposed to respond or not I thought I was and we did it like three, four times, and I asked him at one point, you know, do you want me to, to respond to this? Do you want me to say something different? Do you want me to whatever? Because I was really trying to give them what they wanted, you know. I wanted them to be pleased with it. I mean, they're investing in me. They paid for my flight down there. They paid for my hotel. They paid me to be on the show. I really wanted to give them what they wanted. Um, so I did ask questions, but it was it was still difficult in the end to, to really give them what they wanted, you know. And I'm my own worst critic, so I feel like I, I didn't do a very good job with it, even though I think they got exactly what they wanted. So anyways, we go on to do the skit of walking through the building, and, uh, and every single thing that he said, like, it was all scripted for him, and this is where it got kind of confusing, too, because... Like he said before we started that this was all going to be open dialogue between the two of us. I could say whatever I wanted, and we'd just kind of banter back and forth. Um, but then when we got down to it, it wasn't open dialogue. All of his was scripted. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that it was written for him, of course, because they have a schedule. You know, they got to know exactly what they're doing so they can just keep on moving one shot after another and get it done because he had plenty more to do that day other than just me. Um, but it was it was really difficult because I'm not used to working in that situation. And it was really difficult for me to find my time in there to uh, to shine it to the way that they wanted me to. I was supposed to be like overly excited um, about just this mundane stuff that they were showing me. And it was a it was a funny idea, but I never felt like I really came through for them. You know, I couldn't find that really excited part of me to put across. 
and um, especially to say things like in the very first shot when we walk into the studio and we see the big green screen. That's the one where I said in the beginning of this video, I wish they wouldn't have shown it to me yet. I wish they would have done that that uh, that bit first so that they could get my natural reaction on camera because that would have come across a lot better. But now I was trying to fake it. And even though, um, well, I guess I couldn't shouldn't say fake it. I should say I was trying to act. And I don't act. Everything in my videos is totally real. Um, so it was just, it was kind of difficult. But that part I thought actually went off really good. I was going to say, you know, we're going to walk in here and he's going to say, this is where all the magic happens. You know, this is where they filmed. And he was just going to start rolling out these names of TV shows that were never actually filmed there. And that was supposed to be the joke coming from him. And I said, okay, so if this was real, if if you were really bringing me in here and there were no cameras filming us, I would be saying over top of what you're saying, I would be saying, oh my God, this is so cool. And I said, can I do that? Because I didn't want to kill his lines. But... In, you know, in being real about it and making it look real and playing my part, that's what I'd be doing. So they said, yeah, go for it. And I said, okay. And while you're saying things about the TV shows, can I be throwing things out like, oh, was this filmed here? Was that filmed? How about this? And he said, yeah. So I thought we had a very good connection in the very beginning in that shot. And I thought that one actually worked very well. Because um, as he's saying these things, I'm like, Titanic? And he's, he's like, no, not Titanic. And I'm listening. I'm like, oh, how about E.T.? And and, uh, and then I'm like, how about, I don't, I don't even remember, Castaway. You know, because there's some awesome scenes in Castaway that were obviously done with green screens. And uh, and he played back perfectly. You know, it was, it was really good there, I thought. In fact, I think I was talking a little bit too much. And so I tried to back off. Um, but then in backing off, I kind of lost... The motivation to go back and forth with that banter so I couldn't think of anything else to say and then at one point he says America's funniest home videos and what I wanted to say I wanted to be like wait a minute Bob Saget was here and I dropped it I could not think of his name I couldn't think Bob Saget and then like my brain just went haywire because like I'm on my own right there and I'm trying to fire back this stuff and keep up with him and he is rocket fast, guys. I mean, he is so smart and so funny and so quick. But not only that, he has a whole team of writers behind the cameras that are throwing stuff at him, you know, throwing lines and throwing TV shows to him. So he doesn't even have to think. And I was just on my own trying to come up with stuff. And, uh, and that was like that for that shot. I think we got good footage for that. Um... But yeah, at that point, my mind just went blank. Eventually, I said, how about the perfect storm? But it was like, I mean, the gag was over at that point, you know? So it's like, let's end this one and move on to the next. And at one point, he did say something in that same shot about exploring the area or that room or something. Um, but the guys filming never gave me that okay before we started. It was simply, you know, the directors of the shot um, gave me the direction of you take two steps forward with uh, with Daniel here keep him a little ahead of you because there's another camera over here and uh, and then that's where you stop and that's that's where the action takes place in this one otherwise I mean I could have explored that whole area there was like tubes of stuff over here I could have picked up and made a big deal on this and that but it was just I, I was like I said I was trying to give them what they wanted and trying to really follow the direction that they were giving um, so from there we went into different rooms, different areas to try to keep this same gag going. But I lost like my footing because where they gave me permission to talk over his lines and banter with him in that first shot, I don't know if they didn't like it or what it was, but like we went in and the next thing we did was um, Greg's cubicle, you know, which was a really funny idea. And when they said that, you know, like I said, you know, he's got a whole team of writers and he's all scripted out and I'm on my own trying to think of what am I going to do to make this funny? How am I going to look excited about something? So I thought, okay, you know, if there's a stapler, I'll grab the stapler and I'll make a funny thing about that. Be excited about the stapler. But his lines were so long, like everywhere we went, his dialogue was so long that his joke lasted from the start of the shot to the end of the shot. And I could not find my time in there 
to squeeze in my own excitedness or or uh, you know just make a joke of my own and I tried it a few times and it just totally fell flat um, I, I talked over him in that shot once and they said don't step on Daniel's line so then it felt like the rules had changed you know they didn't want me to do that now and I'm not saying that's a bad thing I'm just saying you know I was trying to follow the direction they were giving me and I, I got kind of confused so it got difficult from there um, then we went and we did the bathroom and like it was this horribly disgusting bathroom and we couldn't get it right where I was supposed to go in the bathroom and he was supposed to go in the bathroom but who goes first and then how do we film this and, and it was just kind of a mess and it was one thing after another that we filmed after that and it was starting to really drag on and I could tell that Daniel was like how many more of these we have to do because it was taking a long time I'd been there for almost five hours and so we finally went outside to do the last shot and that one went okay. We did it in a couple of different ways. But throughout the whole shoot of, uh, of that bit, it was just, it was difficult for me to find my space, to find my timing in there um, with Daniel and to work in that excitedness that they wanted to see. And it was so different from making my own videos because when I'm making my own videos, I'm controlling the camera, you know, I'm looking going, hey guys, oh my god, look at this, look at this stack of DVDs here, it's so sweet, we got Back to the Future, you know, and things like that. Um, but being there, it was totally different. I was not in control of it, everything was scripted, I had to simply play at that moment off of what they were doing, and it was, <laughs> it was harder than I thought it was going to be. And at this moment in time where I'm making this video and I have not seen the finished product yet, all I can say is that I hope that I came through for them. I hope that we got enough good footage out of all that stuff that they can piece it together and it'll look good. And I think I think so. I mean, um, they're, they're good at what they do. So I think that they will really piece it together and it'll look good in the end. And I'll probably sit here worrying about my own performance until then. And, uh, you know, so I think it's going to be good. But that was pretty much it. When uh, when the day ended, uh, in that bit, that was the last thing that we did. That was how I got my goodbye from, uh, from Daniel. Because the last thing we filmed there was him shaking my hand, saying, Hey, Nate, shake my hand. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you could film this for me. Um, maybe you'll come back as soon as we, this thing closes down because then it becomes a Halloween store. And then I was supposed to act excited there and then turn to the camera and give my outro like I would in my own videos. Um, that was the last time I saw Daniel, so I had to take that as my goodbye from Daniel. Now, if I wanted to stick around the studio, I probably could have actually got a, a picture with him. In fact, in the beginning, they did tell me that we will take a picture of you guys together at some point. And, um, and that didn't happen. So maybe I left too early. Maybe I should have stuck around or something. I don't know. But, um, but that was the end of the day. And I mean, it was really good. It was, it didn't feel like five hours, but at the end I was definitely tired. I mean, going in, I did a quick shot for my vlog and I was vibrant and, and uh, awake and everything. And leaving my eyes were like half mass. <laughs> I was tired. It was it was a long day, but those guys they just kept on going, man, hitting every mark and they're they're so good at what they do. That was that. That was it, guys. That was my experience there at the show. Um after that, basically the deal was that um Elena, the girl that had been driving us around, she could take us to one place um and that would end our working relationship with the show then. So she could take us to the airport or wherever we wanted to go. Um, we just so happened to be done at, I think it was about noon, something like that, almost noon. So she took us out to um, Venice Beach and dropped us off right there at the beach. And we said our goodbyes and she went on about her way. And um, we had lunch and then we went out onto the beach for a little bit, if you guys haven't seen that video. And then uh, we got a lift and went to the airport. And I mean, we were both totally exhausted and we knew we had a long day ahead of us then because our flight was not going out until midnight and our flight would be, uh, well, it would turn out to be three and a half hours 
and then we had like a three hour layover at the next place in Atlanta, back on that flight for two hours, and then we would be home. And that brought me to this morning, where I came home, took a shower, and crashed for like five hours. Um, one more really cool thing that happened while I was there, while we were getting ready and waiting for our flight out of LA, um, D.L. Hewley was on, was on our flight. If you guys don't know him, he is a comedian. Um, he did a guest spot on Fresh Prince as a, a stand-up comedian. You know, I mean, years ago when that show was on, he, he was on some, uh, some 90s sitcoms and things like that. I think he mainly does, like, behind-the-camera work now and uh, uh, stand-up. But I saw him over there talking to the girl that, that gets us through the gate. He had this cute fluffy dog with him, and then there was another guy with him that had like this ginormous Louis Vuitton bag, <laughs> and uh, and I thought, oh, he's getting signed in there, but nobody paid any attention to him, and I thought, you know, why are people not, not uh, going crazy like they usually do when they see a celebrity, and looking around, it was not really the kind of crowd that I would expect to um, to recognize him, and I don't mean to judge people here. But it just, it really, it didn't look like the kind of crowd that would, that would recognize him. Um, but I certainly did. And so I didn't want to make a big deal about it if anybody else would have recognized him. So as our, we were going onto the plane, he was already seated. And I just simply reached down and I, I tapped him on his hand and he looked up. And I said, can I shake your hand? I shook his hand and I said, it's good to see you. And, uh, and he said something back to me I don't even remember. Um you know, nice to meet you or something like that. And I went on my way. So it was really cool. You know, I got to shake his hand. Um, but that was, that was really nice. You know, that topped off the, uh, the, the trip. So it was fun. It was a really good trip. And if you've made it to the end of this video, then you can handle me jibber jabbering for this long. And, um, it was fun. So if you ever get called to be on Tosh.0, it's definitely a fun process. Um, just get ready because they are quick and they are good at what they do. So that's it, guys. My experience with Tosh.0, oh, I'm out. Huge update. His life hasn't changed a bit.